G. Oh, this is just insane. And, you know, the bad part is they didn't um, – they didn't uh, acknowledge my, you know, my question, and I don't know whether they have reduced hours because of COVID. And anyway, here we are live. I'll just do an edit on this thing to chop off ten minutes of insanity. Oh. Um, okay. So it was so. It's so great to talk to you. How are you? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. I'm fed up with this lockdown and COVID thing that. We can't move anywhere. We can't go anywhere. We can't meet anybody. We can't really work. It's, it's, yeah, it's starting to get us down. And coming up to twelve months now, and uh, yeah, I think it, it's getting to everybody. It's getting to everybody. Of course. Now, um, had had it freed up for a while. I mean, how limited? I mean, we've had lockdowns here, but then they started to open them up where you could well, at least go out. You know, you, you go ahead. Yeah, they, they 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 put us in different tiers, um, and um, they different areas, different counties had different tiers. So you know, some were tier two, which meant you could go out and certain stuff was open, um, and you could meet so many people, whatever. Then tier three was a little bit more stringent. Tier four was a almost total lockdown. Then uh, we were in tier two, so it was pretty much you know fairly free and easy. And then about three weeks, two weeks, three weeks ago, the government said, right, it's tier four. The whole country is tier four. So we are now in what is virtually a total lockdown. Um, we we can't go. Well, we can go shopping, uh, but there's only one person allowed in the shop at any one time. You know, you can't shop. I cannot right. shop with Jane. Um, wow. and you've got to wear a mask everywhere you go. Um but, you know, they're all saying, well, and now as of 4 o'clock this morning, the whole country is isolated because he's closed every air corridor coming into the country. Oh, my goodness. So, oh, really? Yeah so, no, yeah, so nobody can get in or out now. Um, all the airlines are locked down because they're, they're afraid of these new variants that are coming in from all over the place. Uh, I, we seem to be, that seems to be our greatest import at the moment because we imported something from South Africa, I think. We we imported something from Portugal and then we imported something from Venezuela. So our, our greatest import at the moment seems to be COVID, you know. So 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 we've locked everything down now and we can't go anywhere. Nothing to joke about, but hysterical. Oh my God! Hey, you've got to joke. joke. You, if you didn't joke, you'd sit in a railway line and wait for a train. I think so. You've just got to put up with it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! Uh, oh, you will have loved this because it's a. Uh, I'm glad we, we we're doing something a little humor. The, most of my podcasts have been about uh, the bleak situation, is especially the politics. So this is great that we're getting off well, to a great great stuff. Yeah, because lack yeah, of feeling, I, isn't it? Yeah, and and I think everybody everybody's afraid, everybody's scared. Oh yeah, no one knows what's yeah. what's happening. And, and of course, that has right. a knock-on effect. But what I what I was saying today to somebody that um, I was being interviewed uh, uh, earlier on today about something, and 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 it's like everybody thinks that we live in a in a, in a perfectly calm, placid society. Uh, and 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 you, to some extent, over the water there, have some you know the same as us basically. But if you look at our past and you look at our history. There's no such thing as nice, steady, calm stuff. Our whole basis <laughs> has been riots. You know, we, we, we've gone from 1400s when, when Wat Tyler decided to have his peasants revolt right the way through to, you know, the, the land enclosures of the 1600s onto, you know, stuff in the 1800s right up to the minor strike of 1980s. The whole country, and every time... There's been a riot. There has been change. Changes come from that yep. riot. Different laws, different, and society moved on from that. But my my fear, <laughs> being serious for a moment, looking at it as a historian, my fear is that the changes we had came from people, right? So the people said, "Enough is enough." In 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 the 1990s, was it? And the Berlin Wall came down. The people yep. did that. 
No politicians, no... Yep. You know, the people said, we've had enough of this wall now, let's take it down, and down yep. it came. Yep. The people said, in yep. one Romania, of the, one of the we've had enough of, of this all, game. Right. Uh, right, a you miracle know, of in Romania, all time. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. We've had enough of this. They took Ceausescu out and shot him, and, and then Romania was, was freed. So it came from the people. My fear is, when, when it's a person who starts the riot... For a whatever, and I'm, I, you know, I point no fingers, but if someone is starting a riot for their own personal um, grandizement or their own personal um, achievements, that's a totally different thing. And we can hark back to the 1930s for that. And how, how well did that go in Germany? You know, <laughs> so you look, you're looking at stuff that, that if, if it comes from the people, if the people... And, I, and Jefferson, your, your, your great politician, uh, said it fantastically when he said, the government should be afraid of its people. And I don't exactly. mean that, that you're going to put up a... You don't gonna, you're not going to put up a gallows in front of a building, as we saw on the news. That's not the fear we're talking about. The fear is that they should be afraid that they're going to get kicked out and somebody else will replace right. them. You know? Right. And 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 that's we're not afraid of our government anymore. You know, sorry, no. we are afraid of our government now. We're, well, yeah, they're yeah, not no, afraid of us. That's right. It's the other way around. The government is not afraid yeah. of the people. Absolutely. Absolutely. And 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 they go about. You know, we've got some. You you've got some. They've been in post for donkey's years. You know, and, and uh, yes, every every supposedly every sort of five years we we have an election. And we oust a few. But when you look at our system now, you know, it's full of old Eton boys. You know, they're, they're all exactly. scrubbing each other's backs. And that's bad. <laughs> you know, that is exactly. bad. When, when there's a lot of nepotism and stuff like that going on and, and nobody wants to say bad things about the other. And then we've got an opposition here who really is voiceless. He hasn't said a word. We we've got no no political parties. I mean, I, I saw a thing on 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 your Capitol building storming the other night on on the BBC, and the BBC used to be, I would say, a beacon of 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 truth. Now I wouldn't believe yep. the BBC today if it said today was Saturday, without me going to check it, you know. But there was a thing, a clip on about about the storm in your Capitol building, and and. They were being directed by kids or young people. Were directing them, you know, go up them stairs, go do this, do that, and and you, that's where our, that's where our fight always stemmed from, is the kids, you know, the youngsters, the intelligent yep. kids, who have got an idea and can and can change society, and yeah, we might have to have a riot to do it, but it will change society. Um, I mean, they locked down our universities, and you know they couldn't even get food. These these kids, and they just sat there lamely accepting it. Thirty years ago, they would have been burning down the universities, you know, like they did in the Sorbonne in the sixties. You know, the, the fight seems to have gone out of people, and I don't mean I don't mean the break the law sort of fight, but the the, the fight to go out on the street and demonstrate that this is wrong. You know, they they just seem to calmly yeah, accept. Yeah, right. You've pushed so many buttons right now that you know I want to cover. But this is brilliant because it's uh, you know it's great to have the comparison to what you you guys you know have historically done, and especially our generation. I think we're about the same age. I'm 73. Um, you yeah. know, we're called the boomers here in in the states, and That's it right, was a totally different. In the in the sixties, uh, you know, but also we we extensively. yeah we we I mean we grew up with people who came out of the Second World War, you know. We when I when I joined the police force in in nineteen seventy as a young, you know, innocent lad, you know, nineteen years old. My sergeants who were retired about to retire, had fought in the Second World War my sergeants and my inspectors had actually fought in the war. 
So you've got these guys coming along, and, and they were totally unflappable, you know, and, and you try to emulate these guys. Now, that they, they, they don't know anybody that, that's had that amount of fear and gusto and all the rest of the stuff that goes with that. The people of today don't Ad, have, haven't met them. Adversity. You know? Adversity. Yeah. Adversity. Absolutely. They, they've not seen that, that, that amount of, of scarceness. You know, when food rationed and you've got this amount, you've got this amount of butter. Yes, I, I'm not taking that away from people. There are people on the breadline here, believe me, and that, and that is going up and up and up. And I'm not political. You know, I have, I have no political um, knowledge whatsoever. You know, I've, I've never been political. But what I see in, in certainly here is the rich getting richer and the poor certainly getting poorer. And that, that divide is getting wider. And that's a dangerous, dangerous situation. You know, that's a dangerous situation yeah, because yeah. the have-nots, you know, the, the have-nots are looking at the haves and saying, whoa, hang on a minute. And that is becoming wider. And I don't see our government tackling that. You know, I don't see wow. that in that one eye. Wow. Open. And that's, yeah, well, I, I mean, it's... A, I know that's a... Yeah, yeah. Go on. Right. It's a world issue. It's a world... In, in all of most... Well, I don't know. I think in certain countries they're seeing, you know, a movement out of poverty. You know, probably China. Um, yeah. You know, <laughs> a lot of people are coming into a, a middle class that didn't exist before. But you're right. Yeah. In the... In the capitalist societies, you know, we're, we're seeing that. I mean, there's, uh, you, 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 know, you brought up so many fantastic points, but you're right. That's the cry. That's why we're seeing this cry for socialism here. Uh, you yeah. know, people are saying, you know, that the rich have too much. Um, and yeah, I guess that's true. However, here, um, you know, the government did step in with some pretty big stimulus packages to try to assuage some of the pain um but yeah it's it's i don't know where do we i mean yeah our our our, um chancellor here you know the the guy in charge of the money um has been giving he's been doling out a fair amount fair play to to him he has been trying his best to keep businesses afloat to keep people afloat you know you can apply for different loans grants and wherever the, the the but there is, A, where is this money coming from? Who do we have to get into right. bed with to pay for this? You know, who are we borrowing off? Because, you know, we, we're not, we're borrowing it from somebody to pay this. So who well, who will we have yeah, to pay in the future? And yeah, what well, just, are we just, dumping on our kids? Yeah, they're just printing it. They're just printing it, Tony. They're just, you know, yeah. I don't think they even thinking about that part yet and uh but i have back uh, sh- again i have i have back to the 1930s when you know a million reichmarks wouldn't buy a loaf of bread in germany right they exactly. were printing 10 50 million pound million reichmark notes so that you could go and yep. buy a loaf of bread you know right <laughs> that that then is very very frightening <clears throat> to us um, and, and of course, I mean, I, 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 like I keep saying, I, I, I'm not political. Oh, hello? Yeah, I'm here. Hello? I'm here. All right. Oh, I'm here. The electricity keeps going. All right. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Can you hear me? All right. Yeah, okay. I can Sorry, hear the you. electricity's gone off here. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so you've got, um, you've got people who are um, using this for their own ends, and, and that frightens me. That does frighten me, because when, as I say, when I grew up, my my grandfather, who I I knew, I I you know, he came out of the First World War, but he was a raging com- <laughs> raging card carrying communist, following the Great War, and right. he then he he had this this idea of, of 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 communism, in its purest form, everybody was equal, everybody should get a fair piece of the pie, and blah blah blah. My father, his son, came out of the Second World War as a Tory, as a Conservative, the totally the other end of the spectrum from my grandfather. 
So I got bombarded yep. with both views, you know. And I mean, it was quite funny when I joined the police force when they did the research into my background to find that, to find I had a card carrying communist in in my um, in my direct line. Um, that sort of put put a fear of God into into some of my bosses at one time to think I was I might be a, you know an ill, an infiltrator. Um, but yeah, so so I. I I had both. I had both views coming at me as, as growing up, and um, it was interesting because that taught me not to be political, you know, not to care. Yes, cared about the government of the day and cared about you know the, the stuff that's going on, but not align yourself to any given party because I can see good and I can see bad in in, in all our parties. So if I align myself to one, I don't want to tow a party line, you know, and I. That's fascinating. I, I was, Again, another point I want to bring up. Yeah, because uh, for most of my adult life, I was middle of the road more, and I voted on issues or uh, a platform and would go either side, uh, mostly yeah. to the left. And uh, then lately, because of what we're seeing here, um, I've gone more and more right. Um, yeah. And uh, that's because of, uh, and it's a reaction. It, it wasn't yeah. a, it is, I, I'm not postulating it based on, you know, whether I'm a, uh, a com- communist or a capitalist. I'm basing yeah. it on a reaction to what's happening here. We'll see what you're and, um, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I get what you're saying. You, you, you were political, you, you know, you, you weren't totally apolitical. You cared, you cared enough to, go to one side or the other, left or right, depending on yeah. the issue. That's, yeah. Yeah, but right. I, I mean, I, I get mean, you. When, when, Margaret, when Margaret Thatcher came into power in, in 79, uh, I, was a, I was a police officer. I had nine years in as a, a policeman. We were on, I mean, I knew lads that were on family income support because the wages were so bad. Um, you know, if you had a couple of kids, they were on free school meals because of, of the, the, the pay was so poor. But when Maggie came in, I think she gave us a 33% pay rise. And, you know, that mean, meant you didn't have to work your days off to get a, almost a living wage. But right. what we didn't think about was when she gave us that, was that five years down the line, well, certainly three years down the line, we were in Toxteth at the riots there, you know, uh, riot shields, right. petrol bombs, all the rest of it coming at us. Um you know, right. and in broad that that very same time in broad was a farm in London. Keith Blakelock had, had his head chopped off, almost the police officer. Um, and then, you know, we went into the miners' strike of 1984, where we went for 12 months. I didn't see my family for for almost for 12 months because we were. I'd come home on a late on a Friday, and we'd be back off on the Sunday back to another pit. You know, to to wow. if people wanted to work then they had a perfect right to go to work. And sometimes there were only three or four guys going into work with 5,000 people outside trying to stop them. <laughs> so right. we had to get these three, four, five people in th- through a gate. Now, whether you believe in strikes or not, that was, that was what we were there to do. And I've read since that we were classed as Maggie's boot boys. Right. And in, in point of fact, I look back at, at, at our role there, and I, 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 it has me wondering, you know, were we? Really? Really? And it yeah, makes I mean, I saw, you, it I, makes I, you I, think right. yeah. about the Go politics ahead. of it. Yeah, it just makes you think about the politics of it and, and, and how we were utilised. And, and it brings forth today how the police are being utilised. Now, the police are being utilised now to stop people driving about with COVID. Now, OK, I, I understand that. But if my house gets burgled, you know, like like next door got burgled a, a, a while ago now, and no police officer bothered coming, they just get right. oh we'll give you the crime report number and that's it. Now if right. I step out this door and and drive up to the shops, I'll get I'll get stopped. Right. But the 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 issue is that I had to laugh the other day because I'm I'm a ex police trainer. And I used to teach in the training schools and stuff like that. So one slight funny story, which wasn't funny for the police officer, really. Um, he stopped me 
And I always always taught them, you know, you've got to ask proper questions of people. So so this police officer stopped me, and he I, he got out of the car, and he said, walked over, wound the window down. He said, good morning. He said, can I ask you where you're going? So I said, yes. And there was silence. <laughs> and he said, well. I, I said, well, what? He said, can you can you tell me where you're going? Yes. <laughs> so eventually he twigged and, and, and walked away most disgruntled. But you know that's that's how it got me. You know it's 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 got me that that I'm I'm I need some fun as well. You know I I need some fun in my life Excuse as well. Me, just, so. Let me just interject my my comedic take on that. You 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 must be familiar with Monty Python's The Argument. Oh. Absolutely, absolutely. And if, you, if you're going to ask me a question with a yes argument. or no answer, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get a yes exactly. or no reply. Um, so, but it, I, I, I find it incredible, and and you know, and and I know what I would have done because um, I came through the life on Mars, as we've talked about before. I came out through the life of Mars um, CID office. You know, um, I think probably I, I'd have been over the bonnet of a car if it was me that had stopped, stopped that guy in, you know, in the 70s, 80s. But, you know, this poor guy, he walked away shaking his head. He probably ranted when he got back to the police station about, about this jerk he just, he just stopped, you know. But, but, but I, as I say, I've got to Brilliant. have some fun somewhere. You know, I've got to have oh, some fun. Of course, I'm, fed, of I'm fed up in my office now, so, you know. But, yeah, I mean, it's yeah, uh, uh, happened since we last spoke. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's been a while, hasn't it? The world's changed. Yeah. The world has changed. And I was always taught that when I was a police officer, and this might be a little bit contentious, is that when you're interviewing somebody and every and you, you know they say a lie and you, you know it's a lie, everything after that lie tends to be a lie, to back up that lie. So when exactly. you look at COVID, and I'm not, I'm, no, I'm not saying that conspiracy theories or whatever, but when, you, when they say that some Chinese person ate a raw bass and we ended up with COVID, now they're saying, well, no, that was, that was untrue. <sighs> okay, what is it? <laughs> you know, and, that's, and right. I, know there's a, I know there's a strain out there. I know there's a, 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 a virus out there. But my question is, no one's asking the question, where did it come from? We understand it comes from China, apparently, because of Wuhan province was, was, was locked down immediately. But how? Why? What started it? You know, and, and, and we're all being told now to take vaccines. OK, we're taking vaccines. But a virus changes by the mere, mere thing that it's a virus. It mutates. So if I take a vaccine today and a new one comes along tomorrow, does that vaccine cover it? Or do I have to get another? Am I going to be like a pin cushion by the end of 12 months? <laughs> and these, these right. are questions that, that go through my rational mind, but don't go through other people's. And again, it's back to, no. I believe the government. The government is telling me this, so I'm going to believe yep. it. Yep. No one's questioning I think, and I go back to my original point: people are afraid. And and you saw that yeah. through your riots in Washington, people <clears throat> are afraid of what's coming. The difference between you and I is some of them are militia people that were there were frightening. <laughs> that we saw on the news. Yeah. You know, you know, yep. you see our militia on the street, and then 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 they put a little clip about a militia of of black lads on the street. It's it's a powder keg, and what happens oh, with you course. happens with us. You know, we we tend to follow you. Yeah. Um, in in attitudes and all sorts of stuff, we tend to follow America in in our in in yep. cyclical terms of 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 our behaviour. Um, and it's it was it was it's it's terrifying. It's terrifying, and and I, I look at it and I think the, the world is now at the bottom. But again, it's cyclical. You know, it will come back. 
Yeah. It will come back. Yep. We'll be different. There'll be different stuff in place. We might have to live with masks for the next, I don't know, 10 years. I don't, I don't know. Well, you know, Tony, I have to, you know, I'm going to jump in on, you know, I, I, I hope so. And, but I think one of the things you've, you've hit on is this inordinate fear, this inordinate obedience also, or, or at least acceptance of uh, the propaganda. And, and what seems to be lacking that you turned out at the beginning is the adversity component. Um, th- these generations have no idea how to overcome adversity. So, you know, I tell people, you know, there's a reason they don't build these grand cathedrals anymore. People, you know, mm-hmm. like here, I'm a big advocate of family and, mm-hmm. uh, and parenting. And the people say, well, it'll, it'll come back. And I go, but it's like trying to build a cathedral. Nobody knows how to build a cathedral anymore. How to do they it. They don't have the craftsmen exactly. to do it. And so how, how are people supposed to pick up these skills? And I'll throw it back yep. to you. Absolutely. Well, well that, that's what the I, difference. When I, when I, when I, I mean, my, my all-time favorite book is 1984. It has been since I was right. in school. It, it, it's been, I read it probably once a year. I just love the book, and I love it. What gets me about the book, which was written in 1948, hence the title, that he now predicted, right, that there would be uh, cameras everywhere. There would be a thought police, you know. There would be total restrictions everywhere. You couldn't move. Then he said one thing I thought, well, this can't be right, is language will be... Because what they said was in 1984, that why have the words like marvellous, fantastic, great, tremendous, when we can have good, plus good, double plus good, or bad, plus bad, double plus bad? Why do we need all the other superlatives for, for, for the word good and bad? And I thought, oh, that can't possibly happen. You know, no. You look at text messaging. You look at yep. the, the way kids communicate today, is is cutting language down to its bare bones. And you look at, and I've seen them, how, how people put in essays. You know, you have to take a, a breath at the top and try and get through a paragraph because nobody puts a full stop or a comma or, you know, anything. You ask them about apostrophe, they've got no idea what one is. So it, yep. so language yep. is being boiled down. Yep. So pretty soon we yep. won't be able to articulate what we're saying, what we want to say, which is what they wanted to do in 1984. Because if you can't think of treason, because treason doesn't exist as a as a thought, therefore we've eradicated treason. You know, we've eradicated free thinking. And and you know, it's just mind blowing as to what's going on. It really is. I mean, it's just mind blowing. And and. I mean, I look at the, because I've just, I'm going to blow my own trumpet now. So we, I've just got my MA. I've just got my master's in in um, in history. And um, congratulations, I, that's fabulous. Oh, thank you, thank you. I, I, I'm only 66. Well, you yeah, know, you know uh, can and, you and stop you, there? For, can you stop there for a minute? I mean, you know, uh, we we talked before, and you know, I I just oh, I, 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 I'm speechless right now because this is. An absolutely brilliant, fresh of all the things I've done here recently, and um, Brian Culkin. I'll send you a link to things I've done with him. is is um, just a master at language and master at perception and and the analysis of what he calls gentrification and world globalization. And uh, but you're, yeah. you're you're getting you're 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 fine you're picking fine points here, and especially from a, a rational. Uh, perspective and in 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 the other side of in fact that's how I titled this to get a perspective of the other side of the pond. But you yourself <laughs> uh, have done marvelously. You you didn't go back. You didn't decide to become an educator or a writer till much later on in life. Absolutely, I I, I was retired and and um, and living you know a, a fairly decent life on on a on a police pension and and then. I really decided I really need to do something with my life, and then I, I wrote the, the, the five coming up to six books um, now. And then 
I thought, you know, I've got all this information on World War One because that's that's my part of history that I absolutely love reading about. And and it was Jane that suggested it. She said, well, why don't you do something with it? Go and do a course. So I found that there was a course at Wolverhampton University. And bear in mind, I don't have one single qualification out of school. Um, I left school virtually. I didn't go for the last year. Um, I, you know, I hated school with a passion. Um, luckily, when I left school, um, there were plenty of jobs. And, and I, I, I joined the police force um, by fluke. I didn't know what the police force really was, but I joined it at the, at the age of 17 as a cadet and then became a, a regular police officer at 19. So I didn't kind of know what that was. Um, but having, I got through that, and I found education very late. So I went on a, a what they call the trainer's course and, and to learn how to teach the recruits. And I was 30-odd, 30 38, I think. And suddenly it clicked into place. Suddenly, something that I like came on, and and I I got into education very late, and I did a lot within the police force, did all my exams within the police force, I then qualified as a post traumatic stress disorder counsellor, and did stuff like that. And then when I left, I I kind of bummed around the world for a while. When I met Jane, settled down, I started again. But it was it took me a long time to have the confidence to actually go back to university, or rather go to university, not go back. I mean, I, he's a guy with no qualifications. But I'd, I'd earned enough qualifications through the police force to grant me a, a chance at this course. And it was it was on World War One. But we go back to language again and writing essays and writing, writing dissertations um, where... You know, you've got to get it right and you've got to do the research, but you've got also got to put that down correctly. You know, you've got to write it correctly um, with the full stops and the commas because you've got very eminent people reading, <laughs> reading this stuff. So you, you right. know it's got to be right and you will be marked down if there's an apostrophe in the wrong place or a, you put a colon instead of a semicolon, whatever. Um, yeah. So <laughs> it makes you think... <laughs> It really does make you think, and and I was thinking, oh my God, you know, I'm I'm a thicko here, and I'm trying to work with these eminent people because if it, over here, when every anything comes on the TV about World War One, my professor would be the guy on the TV. Whoa. So I'm thinking, this guy knows stuff, you know. Um, so yeah, so so when I got my I've actually got my thing on the wall here now, which I'm rather proud. Of. I have to say, I am rather proud of it. Um, and, and now I've got I'm Tony Davis, MA. I've got letters after my name, you know. So it, wonderful! It, Congratulations! It made, yeah, it's fabulous. Thank you, thank you. It, it it does make you sort of it it puts a little seal on the fact that that you know I'm I'm I do know stuff, and um, yeah, I was kind of pleased with it, and uh, I've. I've got well, again, you know, book. You're, you're doing it. You, you, you know, what, I, what, I, what I'm uh, thrilled about is the fact that you, there's passion involved. There's there's a, an, uh, an integrity to it. There's an authenticity to it, because you you're not going there for a pragmatic reason. Well, I'll get the degree and then because I can get a good job. Yeah, which no, is I, what <laughs> we're seeing today. Yeah, yeah, and and I I got it because I wanted. I wanted to prove to myself that I that I that I knew stuff about about this 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 epic time in 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 both our countries really um, uh, history and and um, also when I write the books I I write the books in a to keep these guys alive I write about the the fallen of the Great War and I want to keep these guys alive you know I mean I've got in my office here one day you may come over and. Sit get over here and see it. I must have a box here of about two and a half thousand photographs of World War One wow. soldiers. Unfortunately, there are no names on the back. I don't know who these guys are. Um, but wow. people locally know know that this is what I do. Um, and they say, hey, right, okay. Well, well, I've got this stuff. Do you want it? And I, mean, I can't remember what I told you in the last 
the last one about going to talk at a WI meeting. And Jane says to me, don't bring anything else into this house. She said, the foundations of the house are starting to weaken because of the amount of stuff I've got here relating to World War One. I. I mean, I've got something in region of 450 books on the subject, never mind all the other stuff that I've got on the walls. So I said, no, no, I promise. No, I won't. I'll, you know, trust me, which is a very bad thing for me to say. So off I went, did this talk, and she hears, I come home, and she hears this clattering in the kitchen. She comes out, what the devil are you going to... They're going to throw it out. I came back with a World War One stretcher that they were going to throw out. So I brought this thing in, and it's now in my office. She was, going to, she was going to put it to good use. Oh, absolutely. She looked at me as if to say, I'm going to wrap it around your skull. <laughs> you know, you know. They're going to be carrying you out on it. <laughs> yeah, but there's no way I could, no way I could sort of hide it. You know, I couldn't. I was banging everything, bringing it in. So, you know, she, she, otherwise I could have snuck it into my room. I'd have been fine. But no, she she got me on that. So, but but people know what you know that I do this stuff about World War One. So they they ring me up and they, they'll find stuff and say, look, I've got these medals. Do you want them? Um. Knowing full well that they, they they won't end up on eBay, let's put it that way. Um, so I've got medals all over the place. I've got bits of paper. I've got photographs. I've got I've got twelve bayonets. Um, you know, all sorts of stuff. <clears throat> um, a World War One officer's sword. You know, and stuff like that, all dangling about in my room. If the police ever raided the place, I'd be locked up. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the stuff I've got here, yeah. Well, yeah, it's 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 quite amazing. Well, you know, I, I, a few things. I mean, I spend uh, a good chunk of my life uh, reading about spirituality, and mm-hmm. uh, and I've I've learned a lot in, in in listening to you. It's you know, I I don't know if you've ever questioned, but I'm I'm thinking, you know, there's something inside you. Obviously, there's a, there's a there's a driving force. An well, intangible driving again, force. Yeah, that's, I don't that's know making whether, whether you, I giving on, you this desire. Yeah, I don't know whether I told you the, the last time, but but it it, it was amazing because I've got this alter alter ego, and if somebody puts Tony Davis dot me into into the the thing that they come up with my website, and I've got this ego alter ego called uh, George Riley, and right. George was a lad, a local lad from my area. Uh, from my village right. here, just outside Nutsford, and he was killed in 1917. And so my alter ego will dress in World War One gear, and he'll go into schools, and and I'll talk about World War One, life in the trenches, blah blah blah. And we were asked if we could go to this big uh, flower festival uh, in 19 in 2014, 2015, and and talk, read letters from the front. And I've got loads of letters here from from soldiers. So we did, and there must have been. 10, 15,000 people there. And we're there talking Ooh. away. And, and, and then we did. We had a little walk around. In, and I'm in full uniform um, with all the pack and the the rifle and the helmet and all the rest of the stuff. And um, this lady came up to us and tapped us on the shoulder. And me and my mate were both in kit, turned around. And she said, oh, she said, can I take a photograph? So she took a photograph of us both. And then she said, I had, a, I had a relative that was killed in World War One. I. I said, oh, really? She said, yeah. She said, he's a local lad. I said, oh, well, what was his name? You know, thinking I'd probably written about him if, if you know, one of my books. She said, it's George Riley. Oh, my God. And honest to God, <laughs> I almost fainted. The back, you know, the hairs on the back of my neck went up. And I said, really? And I told her about me and what I did and who I was. And she started crying. Um, she was his great niece, and she said, "Well, and I'd never oh. seen. I've seen a photograph of him, but only in civilian clothes." So she said, "Look," she said, um, "I've got a photograph of him. I've got to give it to you, and I've got some letters that he sent back and stuff." She said, "Do you want them? <laughs> Did I want them? Oh, what a God. stupid <laughs> question!" So the next morning, I'm banging on her door, you know, saying, "Give do So I've now got a photograph of George. I've got some letters he sent back from the front. His medals, unfortunately, are in Australia. 
Um, I haven't got the address because I'd go and burgle the place if I could if I could get there. Um, but yeah, get so I've got stuff of George's that that you know that he'd touched, he'd written, and stuff like that, and and the photograph of him. Um, so that was amazing, and that was George. George directed that lady to me, without doubt. Of course, because there was what, so many know, I'm people. Sitting here, right, I'm sitting here on the sidelines and 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 analyzing this from a you know intangible spiritual aspect, and yeah, there are forces guiding you, yeah. obviously. Yeah, yep. George, George, and, was... and it's strange. It's a very strange thing because I can put the uniform on. And I'm, you know, Tony Davis. But there's a thing called putties. And the putties have got wrapped around the bottom of your legs. Um, oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's like a big, long bandage. And they wrap around the bottom of your yeah, legs, yeah. really to strengthen your legs. Yeah. And it's only when I put them on, I change. I change wow. from being Tony Davis to a First World War soldier. And wow. even Jane notices the difference that, that I will change. As soon as I put those putties on... I change character. I become a First World War soldier. I become a, you know, oh, and it's oh, bizarre. It really is bizarre. And is but your it, performance, it's part your of, performance must be taped. If you, you must have a video of the performance, right? Um, I don't know whether I do because we go into schools. I've got photographs, but I don't really have performance. I mean, yeah, I've, I've seen. Are you, well, are you? Uh, uh, let me ask you. Are you? Are you? You should document this. Because it'd be fascinating to watch, especially on your website. Yeah. Well, well, one of the funniest things was, and again, forgive me if I've told you this before, but um, the History Channel rang me up and said, uh, "You're into history, aren't you?" Uh, yes. She said, "Well, um, <clears throat> what do you what, what do you know about Romans?" So I said, "Well, are you paying?" They said, "Oh yeah, all right. I know a lot about Romans. I know nothing about Romans." Okay. And so um, <laughs> we did some filming. And I'm I'm dressed as a Roman <laughs> legionary, spouting all this stuff on the History Channel about Romans, right? Now, bear in mind, you know, I can BS for Britain because you know I was a police officer for God's sake, so I can I can talk about anything. Right. And um, it was so funny because a few, you know, I came back home and I, I told Jane. And I, she said, "So you actually were telling lies?" I said, "I wasn't telling lies. I said I was making stuff up." <laughs> So, so we 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 watched it, and she we watched it on the TV, and she said that was really good. You sounded really good. I said, yeah, well, yeah, you know, I can, I can, you know, I can do that, you know. So a few weeks later, we watched we watched War Horse. We watched War Horse. The oh film. yeah. Apart from it being the very worst World War One film I've ever seen in my life, and I've seen some bad ones. Um, I was there ranting about this, you know. Well, look at that guy. He's 1915. He's got a tin hat. They weren't issued until 1960. Giving it all this, you know. And I said, whoever was the historic researcher on this <clears throat> wants shooting. And she looked at me, James, yeah. and went, well, I remember a, a Roman expert on TV the other week that was talking <laughs> rubbish. <laughs> so that, that, I'm afraid, was me shot. I was shot down in flames there, I'm afraid. Yeah. Yeah, so if you uh, had me there, I'm afraid. Do you, have you got that segment from the History Channel at least? Uh, so on, in your yeah, I've got it. I've got it. Yes, I have. Yes, I have got it. I, we've got that on on somewhere. I can dig it out now. What am I doing? I'll, I'll send it over to you. Take a look at it because um, it was quite yeah, funny. Yeah, I'd love to. See. Um, it was love it was quite it. funny because I was I had to say uh, don't don't believe anything the Roman legionary is saying because he's making it all up because he knows nothing about Romans. <clears throat> but then it, then they they, they um, must have done something okay. Because they called me back, so I must have done something good. <laughs> um, well, you touched on so much. I, I think, uh, you know, we, I, I, I'd like to review again the, the the difference. And this is part of what this ties in so perfectly uh, to Brian's take. He's written, uh, I think he's written 15 books and uh, he's actually wow. got a, his publisher is out of London. He lived in London for a while. Yeah. And, uh, and he's talking about this shift. And of course he's, he, he his emphasis is on the technology. So, I mean, when you start to, you know, talk about 1984, I mean, now, now you have, 
the technology to really um, extrapolate this and to really um, accelerate the um, the changes that you know of Absolutely. control. Yeah, it, you know Absolutely. we have the and cameras, it... we have the campus, we have we have social media, we have the internet, um, and you know he's he's pointing out that people are getting dumber and dumber as you're pointing out. Oh, without uh, doubt, there's, there's no without regard. Doubt. Right. Yeah. Without doubt. And, and, and uh, we probably didn't see it as much. And and this is gonna sound this is gonna sound awful and, and but I'm talking as a historian now, that roughly every twenty years we would have a war. Yep. And the war took out the foot soldiers, you know, in, in mostly. And every 20 years, you go back to 39, then you go back to 1918, then you go back to the Boer War, then you go back to, you know, our our stuff in the, the colonies. Certainly for, for us, every 20 years, we, we had a war. And and that reduced the population, you know, that culled the population. Yep. And we haven't had a war now since, since 1945. So you're looking at 80 years, you know, about, what is it now, 44, 70 years. Um so, COVID come along at a very apt time, you know. And if you look at, cons- I, mean, I, I, I love conspiracy theories. I, I, I love them, you know. I don't subscribe to them, but I love reading about them. So, is COVID the war we never had? Was one I read the other day. And it's it's interesting how people's take on this changes, um, you know, that that it's some sort of big conspiracy. It's a big brother thing whereby we, you know, it's it's to keep control of us. It's to do this. It's to do that. The human spirit can't be contained. If if you if you look at the likes of I don't know. Let's think of Russia. <clears throat> or we think of Yugoslavia. What they did in you know in the early parts of the 1900s, they forced them together. They pushed them all together, um, and said, right, you are now one country. You can't do that because you look at Russia now, broken back into its, its its original form. Look at Yugoslavia, gone back to its original form. Look at us now. We are, we we have left the EU. We have never been Europeans, I suppose. That 22 miles of water has kept us separate. So we've now started to push away from that. And how much of us leaving affected Markle and her decision to to resign? You know. You know, Europe right. now is without the great Great Britain, and and Great Britain, you know, we we are a big contributor. We have com- contributed loads to Europe, not not only financially, but militarily. You know, our lads have fought on there twice, or three times <coughs> if, you get, if you count sort of the Napoleon getting Napoleon as well. You know, we we've gone over there. We we've we fought their demons for them. Um, and we we paid the price, and we we are now going to be a separate, autonomous region away from Europe. Uh, yes, we only won that by a million, but if we'd have won it by one, it didn't make any difference. That's what democracy is all about. You know, we've come out. Yes, it's going to be difficult for us. Yes, we're going to be looking for for new friends, if you will. But they're all saying, well, ooh, you know, they won't trade with you. Are you telling me that BMW and Audi are not going to sell us their cars? We're one of the biggest yeah. importers of Audis and BMWs. <clears throat> you know, so you're going to say they're not going to... Come on. You know, so it's, it's... I think the next couple of years for us, certainly as non-Europeans now, is going to be interesting. Yes, we'll have to stand in the non-European queue when we go to go into to France and, <laughs> and Spain. Yeah. But, you know, are the Spaniards going to say, no, sorry, you can't come to the Costa del Sol for your two weeks holiday? We're the biggest people to go there, you know. They're not going to suddenly turn around and say, no, you're not allowed in, mate, you know. So all the scaremongering that, 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 that came out, you know, it, and, and it is scaremongering. It's to keep us scared and to keep us on the back foot. And we are not afraid of our governments anymore. And uh, Sorry, we are afraid of our governments. The governments are not afraid of us anymore. And and they should be. And that, that's, you know, well, that's my fear. Well, you know... It's funny. I again, I voted for uh, Al Gore. I, you know, and I think back, and I yeah. voted for Clinton. And um, I, I don't think I 
you know, voted for anybody. I, I did go to the polls and voted for myself during uh, the later <laughs> part of Bush and also for Obama. And, um, and only... And then as the climate changed to all of the things you're speaking of, as as a comedian uh, and just as a normal citizen, all of a sudden I, I found the, this new speak, the group speak, whatever you want to call it. Um, if I said something, well, the first time it ever hit me, I used I was on stage and I said uh, uh, to some women, uh, you, you know, would you, one of you girls help me out? And at the end, there were three or four women screaming at me that I had used a naughty word <clears throat> and I was shocked because I didn't even know what they were screaming about. And then when they told yeah. me the word was girl. And, um, so, I mean, I was totally embarrassed. I, I apologized, et cetera. And then it only got worse and worse, um, to the point that I, I perform did a performance recently for a friend and it was a coffee house, and it was a different venue. It was still humor, but they wanted me to just tell stories. And during, yeah. and I noticed that the the uh, the group was very young. They were millennials, and um, they were on their lap. And I said something. They, they closed. A few of them closed their PCs and left. But one person said to me afterwards, he says, you know, that term that you used might have been appropriate 20 years ago, but you can't say that anymore. And I said, which word? And he told me. And I said, wait, 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 wait. I says, I didn't say it. I says, I was quoting a character. I was acting out a scene. And it was a scene of 20 years ago. Yeah, but man, you know, so, and I told the, the person who asked me to do it, I warned him. I says, you know, I'm tired of the PC stuff. I'm tired of being attacked yeah. when my intentions are nothing but pure. I'm tired of being yeah. censored and accused and guilty and tried. And so yeah. I went off on this kid and, um, and all of a sudden, the manager, who was also a millennial, a woman who was managing the place, came up and said, you're going to have to leave. You're, you're upsetting the place because I was speaking. <laughs> and, and so she said, uh, I said, I'm going. And, of course, I've got a prosthesis. So I took my sweet time. You know, I'm 72 years old at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm limping. Out of it. But, I, you know, I'm, I'm doing passive resistance. I'm, I'm going slow. And she's yeah. screaming, you're, you have to go faster. And I'm saying, well, and then the next word, get this, and, they, and as a policeman, you're going to love this, because now we're, the big scream in America is defund the police. They hate the police. And yeah. she, what does she say? Call the, Call the police. police. And she's yelling at the bartender, and the bartender is picking the phone up to call the police because the man used the term. And it wasn't even an epithet. It was um, it was a colloquialism of 20 years ago. And, uh, in fact, uh, <laughs> I'll give you the tip. It's what you call cigarettes. <laughs> right, yeah, right. And, and, yeah. And the guy, so uh, so she, uh, they're screaming at the top of their lungs. They're petrified. <sighs> and I'm screaming, oh, really? I said, and this isn't. And you're, you're on the left screaming that the right are fascists. And yeah. I said, this isn't, this isn't reminiscent of 1930s Germany. I said, you're yeah. going to call the Gestapo because I use yeah. a term you don't agree with. And that's what it's come yeah. to now. Absolutely. And in fact, I, I all would of love... the national, com yeah, national comedians won't perform in colleges because of the, no. the it's gone the so PC. far the other way. Come back, George Carlin. Yeah. So it, it, come back, John Belushi. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come back, all these guys yeah. that... that that broke the barriers, you know, Lenny Bruce, come on, come on back, please, yeah, you know. Right, well, like, well mean, you know, Bruce... somebody, that's a perfect thing. It's, somebody sent me uh, Don Rickles opening for the um, Saturday Night Live, and he was yeah. Don Rickles. I mean, he was, no. he was using every uh, epithet and slur, and, and people were laughing. And, yeah. and it came from a, a place of, of integrity. It came from a place of love. I mean, one of the things the Rickles would apologize, not apologize, but he would praise everybody for being good sports. Yeah. And, uh, and I looked at it. And so I said, um, I said, you know, I said, what, what, what great times they were. And the next thing I know, yeah. this is also texting. He says, well, you, you, but we never experienced having to go to a, um, uh, certain motels and being excluded from other motels and hotels and, and restaurants and, and, and I was shocked. I mean, I was just, again, mm. trying to 
make a pleasant observation. And <laughs> so I'm being rebuked because I'm not conscious of the time when there was segregation down south for entertainers. Yeah. And, and I said, I started to ask questions. Well, when did that happen? You know, wh- wh- why are we bringing that up now? That wasn't. But so everything has become political. Yes, you, you were saying yeah. you're apolitical. But everything here now is political. And, but they're um, sanitizing. And, they're sanitizing history. Yeah. And if and exactly. but they're doing it here now. You know, we we and I, I see they're doing it in the U.S. You know, removing statues and whatever. Now they're removing yeah. statues of, of of slave owners, and they're yeah. throwing them in the river. Yeah, and but they're, more. So what they're, they're doing they're is going sanitizing after Lincoln. It. They're yeah. going after yeah. Abraham yeah. Lincoln. The thing you I know, like. And, and so, the thing I. The, go, on. go ahead. The thing that made me laugh was the fact that they'd written all over the statue, Black Lives Matter and all this, all over the, the War Memorial for the 54th Massachusetts. The 54th Massachusetts was a black right. regiment, the first black regiment, right. and they'd written all over it. <laughs> so I said, please, you know, history, you know, yes, all right, you know, Shaw was, was a white person, he led it and all the officers were white, but it was the first real black regiment, you know. Yep. Uh, other than the Kumbaye that were down in the south, but you had the, and we've got it here. I mean, I mean, sanitising history. I mean, there's there's one thing that that, that yes, it, it's it's perhaps difficult, but in in 1943 we've got a guy called Guy Gibson. Gibson led the led the Dam Busters raid. Um, and he you know got the VC Victoria Cross for that. You know, 58 men died on that mission to. To blow up all these dams in 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 Germany, in the Ruhr in Germany, and he is being cut out of history because of his dog. Now, if his you think dog. that he's got his dog, right? Because his dog was black, and he'd named it. Mm. Okay, I won't say the word, but it begins with N. Yeah, right, but right, right, cut right, 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 right. Now, this is 1943, for God's sake. It's not, you know, yesterday, but he's named his dog. And now Guy Gibson really can't be mentioned in history because of his dog, because he named his dog that. Now, we're talking, you know, 80, 60, 70 years ago, but Guy Gibson is written out. So if we are, and and I'm I'm always, you know, conscious, if, if we don't learn from history, we're going to bloody repeat it. And it would only take, because we're getting into such a such a, a frightened, and, and the government are pouring it on with fright, fright, scared, 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 you know. And, and the media, and the media. And the, me- oh, the, and me- the media the are the worst. And the media. Yeah, and all it would say is, okay, do you know what? All this stuff was caused by blue-eyed people. Blue-eyed people ah. are to blame for all this, you know? <laughs> and... The lamp My post favorite would be yeah, stretched. Go ahead. The lamppost would be stretched then with every blue eyed person dangling from it because, you know, people are so afraid and so scared. Yes. And and yes. not thinking for themselves. They're just letting the government no. think for them. They're let, they're reading the media yep. and believing it. Yep. You know? Yep. And and it's it yep. think for yourself. You know yes. it's it I know there is a there is there is a virus here. I know we have problems, but you know you've got to think for yourself and not just blindly believe what well, some guy well, in Westminster yeah, is saying to you. Right. Well, I yeah. get again. You know, Brian. Uh, I hope that you can listen to his last lecture and and you would certainly enjoy the one we did before the podcast about. America on the brink, and he predicted it. He said, you know, this. Uh, we went in just before the election, and he said this thing will not be resolved. This thing will go on for months, and he and he turns out to be a prophet in that sense. <clears throat> but he, you know, he's he's everybody who's an, an analyst right now. It, it's it's tough to come up with the the answers, and it's tough to analyze on what level mm-hmm. this is really taking place. But he came to the point where he said. Uh, and is saying, in fact, he did a Facebook post yesterday saying the only way out of this te- technological um, nightmare that is creating all of that, assist, certainly assisting and abetting 
all of this insanity right now. He says, says there has to be a spiritual awakening, and which which is yeah. what you're basically saying is people have got to wake up, wake up and 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 think for themselves, and and not exactly blindly believe what 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 is being fed to them, and it is being fed to yep. them. I mean, if you look at if you look at the likes of you know Bezos, or you look at the likes of Tesla. I mean, their profits are unbelievable. Now, I'm not going anything against Amazon because I'm a big Amazon user. And, and you know, he's got the system almost right. You know, you sit at your computer, I order something. Within 24 hours, it's on, on my doorstep, you know? Yep. And, it's, and the price is a good price. You know, it's not inflated. Yep. It's not, you know, and it's free delivery. So why am I, why would yep. I get off my backside, drive all the way to our, what is our Home Depot, if you will, B&Q, stand in line, get me, have my mask, buy it, put it in the car, bring it home. Why would I do that when, when Amazon is doing it? So, I mean, there are people making a lot of money, like Pfizer, like like um, AstraZeneca. They are making billions, you know, what is happening to that money? It's not certainly being fed back into the communities, and people are getting right. are getting um, <clears throat> poorer. You know, like we've got a lot here. Probably you have two of zero hours contracts. So if you don't yep. work, you don't get paid. You know, right. and 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 so more people are, are being put onto zero hours contracts. Um, so if you don't work, what are you going to do? You're going to get. You know, the government has got a handout to you, and you, you're going to live on £92 a week, which is just over, what, $110 a week? Which is, you know, I don't think so. So it, I, I, I'm, a, I'm, no, I'm no politician, and I'm, I'm certainly no, you know, political know-it-all. But looking at it from a historian point of view, and looking at society, because I, I love reading about society and how it, how it evolves and how it changes... What we're seeing now is fear, and that that to me can spark something horrible. You know, it can spark something Have you, horrible. Uh, I don't know if we've talked about it, but um, the book that changed my life, and I didn't find it till I think I was sixty-eight or so, uh, was um, uh, the, uh, "Outwitting the Devil" by Napoleon Hill, the same guy that wrote "Think and Grow Rich." Think and Grow and Rich. He, yeah, you you mentioned it. I bought it. I, I read it. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, and 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 what is what does the devil say? He interviews the devil. And he says, "Who who controls the planet?" He says, "I do." Mm -hmm. He says, and first of all, he says, "What are you?" He says, "I'm the I'm the, nothing but the negative field." You know, there's a positive field, a negative field. You need the negative field because the, there'd be total entropy if if I didn't exist. And he says, "Well, who controls the planet?" He says, "I do." He says, "How do you do that?" He says, "Simple fear." Mm. And then he says, well, mm. who, who's your, who are your allies? He said, simple. He says, parents, schools, the government, um, and organized religion. He says, why is that? He says, because exactly what you're talking about. They destroy independent thoughts. Yeah. They make yep. robots out of everybody. And he says, and, once and, they and do it, that, I've got them. Yeah. yeah. And, it's, and it's a shame. Yeah. And it's a shame because... You know, well, you know, it's, I'm, it's I'm, taking away I've that got a free great, spirit. Exactly. Well, I've got a great relationship going with this. I'm living with this woman I met a year and a half, two years ago, and she's got an 11-year-old son. And um, so he's, you know, taking online courses. And the other day, I hear the teacher saying they lied to you about Christopher Columbus, and uh, Christopher Columbus was evil. And so <laughs> that's, you know, so I'm picking up. And so she has an agenda. This is a, this is part of the agenda. This is part of the you know, let's let's sanitize, like you said, everything. And but yeah. then he, he he reads to me the last question on a Spanish exam. On a Spanish exam, the last question is: Should we eliminate Christopher Columbus Day, and and should it be changed to uh, Indigenous Peoples Day, and why? And I'm saying, I thank God he's not my kid because I I'd, I'd, I'd be in her face like crazy because yeah. She's she's trying to push her agenda. It's her agenda. You know, this has yeah. nothing to do with, with Como Esta Usted. And, mm. and so these mm. kids are being swayed. The new new think, you know, have you read um, 
uh, *Sapiens* by J- uh, Harari. No, the, uh, he's written two books, *Sapiens* and the other one is *Homo* uh, *Homo Deus*. And uh, you know, you mentioned a great point. In fact, when I was cl- uh, closing my shows at the last time I performed, I did a lot of humor about myself and my disability. And in fact, I got thrown off of a cruise ship line because of it, because I was, <laughs> I was poking fun at myself. And then when yeah. they decided to hire me back, they had to put disclaimers, pictures of me. You know, I have a promo picture of me holding up my artificial leg. And yeah, they had to put yeah, yeah. disclaimers in, disclaimers in saying this man, uh, you know, makes makes fun of his disability. His material is based on his disability. If this you find this offensive, please don't go. And so go, I would yeah. then carry yeah. it further and have to make a disclaimer if you're if you're offended. Um, please leave before this or just mm. raise your hand and I'll be happy to go somewhere else. Anyway, so I do this material about my leg. And at the end, I said, well, you're going to ask me uh, why, uh, how I lost the leg. So I'll, I'll tell everybody rather than explain it 50 times. So I was at the age of 13, I come down with a form of cancer called osteosarcoma. And if 100 kids got it in those days, 95 died. So um, then I make light, you know, they get very quiet. And I says, well, you know, the disease is extremely virulent. And uh, I says, I got it at 13. I says, that was uh, three years ago. I says, it ages you like a son of a bitch. And (laughs) that gets a laugh. So then I said, uh, so then I would say, listen, I got to tell you, the only therapy they could give me was radiation therapy. And I ended up in the radiology business for years. And every once a week, at least, a doctor would say to me, uh, why are you limping? And I said, I had osteo. And before I could finish the term, he would say to me, wrong, misdiagnosis. If you had that, you'd be dead. I said, so I was blessed for almost uh, 27, 30 years of my life. Somebody reminded me weekly that I'm lucky to be alive. And I said, yeah. I have news for everybody here tonight. So are you? I said, this is a gift. You didn't create yourself. You're lucky to be alive. And I said, I read some Sapiens, and in Sapiens, Harari says in the last chapter, just as you pointed out, in 70 years, this is the greatest 70-year period ever to be alive. Why? No major world war. No Great Depression. Mm-hmm. Now, you can't say this now, but uh, a year and a half ago, you could say uh, no, no pandemic, no uh, plagues. Yeah. Um, and then I would add it that we throw away more food than we eat. I said there's not an old yeah. car on the street. Do you remember old cars? Um, we have mm-hmm. little knob in the house to make us comfortable temperature wise, hot and cold, clean as a historian, you can see the significance of all of these things. And so I would look at the audience and I go, so I have a question for the United States of America, for all the people in the United States, what the hell are you pissed about? What are you so angry about that? You, we are alive yeah. at the greatest time ever for human beings to be on the planet. And yeah. And then Harari in Homo Deus starts to point out what's happening now is that the way you create new religions is you, you destroy history. And as a historian, mm-hmm. this has got to be really up your butt sideways, is the rewriting of history and, yeah. and uh, the sanitizing of it. And so everything that the, the analysts, the bright people are seeing, we're starting to see manifest. And it's just uh, – and I think – Tony, for you, people like you and me, and this is what I love about this, you, 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 even though you're, you're apolitical, you, you must people hear you saying, why, why do you think about this stuff, Tony? Why, why do you care? Well, we do. Yeah. That's, that we yeah, don't we have see. a choice. We see it. Because we care about people. And we have to, yeah, we have to say it because yeah. we'd, we'd, yeah. we'd die if we couldn't speak it. And, um, exactly. So we're, we're the, we're, yeah, we're the lone wolves. We're the lone wolves screaming in the night if something's wrong folks and yeah. we've got to yeah. wake up so we, we've got to and, wake up um, and we've got to wake the kids up you know um well and, and, and that's the whole other thing accepting. you know I, I mean when all of a sudden there was this mass ex- you know i got to the point where it's such a passion for me you know people want to I talk about their own agendas. You know, the feminists have their agendas. You yeah. know, blacks have yeah. their agendas. The gays have their agendas. Mm-hmm. And I, I tell them, listen, I'll go with you. But I said, you know, you're talking to the wrong guy because you're concerned about your career and your salary or your own special. And, and it always comes down to economics. It doesn't 
yeah. team that comes from Absolutely. it. And says, where I'm, I'm concerned about school shootings. You know, I'm concerned yeah. about the opioid crisis. I'm concerned with mm. 45 25 percent of teenagers are contemplating suicide i said do you see yeah. that below the surface we've got a disease we've got a disease yeah. societies and yeah. that's my um, concern because everything's unraveling because there's no core structure yeah i mean we i living with jane uh, you know who, who goes into schools and, and with with her company girls out loud i mean she she is um dealing with this on a daily basis for, for young girls. I mean, the, the, the amount of, of depression, suicide in teenage girls, um, self-harming, serious self-harming, which res results in hospitalisation. We are talking serious, serious problems, mental health-wise. And, and what do you do? You close the schools. So we, we, we our yep. kids now have not been in school since, almost since last March. So almost 12 months of schooling has gone by the board. Now, I'm a fairly intelligent guy. There is no way I can be a teacher, right? Of I could teach history, not a problem. I could probably have a rough go at geography. Can I teach English-ish with mathematics? No idea. If I get beyond 5 plus 5 is whatever, that's it for me. You know, if you're looking at... I mean, algebra. I'm not, I've never used algebra since I, you know, was in school. But algebra, trigonometry, all that stuff. Am I going to know that? No. You know, so I, I can't replace a teacher. But we've had this now for 12 months. These kids have not been in school. So what are you going to get? You're talking about the society dumbing down. And then, then my issue is that that we're going to give them a a grade. The teacher is going to make up a grade out of his head. You know based on what he thinks that kid should get as an exam result and give them that. In 10 years' time, when this kid goes for another job and they look at his qualifications, his or her qualifications, and say, oh, I see you've got your qualification in 2021. Nah. And there's somebody there with someone in 2019 or 2022 when it's a proper examination type thing, who's going to get the job? You know? Not somebody right. who's been given the thing, but somebody who's actually worked for it. Right. That will be the thing in, 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 in 10 years' time, that these people have just been given to shut them up, give them a qualification. Right. We've lost right. a year, a whole year of their, and more to come, right. you know, that they're not right. in school. And for some of these right. kids, it's the only safe place they've got. Home might not yeah. be safe for some of these kids. Yeah. You know, yep. the streets are not safe for these kids because then whether you've right. got the same, we, we've got massive grooming gangs. We've got massive, you know, we've got a thing called County Lines, which is a drugs cartel that, you know, these kids are couriering for them. Yep. It's, it's, we've got to sort of get our kids, get on back into school. If we've got to put a teacher in a box, you know, where he's completely, right. he or she is completely covered and just put them into a box and say, right, teach from there. Get them into school because they, they are we are going to be floundering for education. And you're telling me, because I know I wouldn't, if somebody said to you, right, you're going to go online, yeah, and do your lessons online, would you have done them? I know I wouldn't. I'd have been out right. playing with my mates. Gone. You know? Oh, oh, um, that's exactly what's happening. Right. You know, so, right. so they're not that is being what's educated. Happening. We see it here. If he if if yeah. we weren't on top of Henry, then Henry would be outside. You know, uh, he'd be no, he'd be Gone. on a video game. Is what he'd be on. Absolutely, yeah, he'd be, he'd be on his on his Xbox or whatever. You and I would have been out with our right. mates doing something. You know, um, right. but right. but now that they're they're they're, 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 they're finding that kids are, are suffering sleep deprivation yep. because they can't come off their machines. They're on these these gaming yep. machines exactly. or, or whatever. Exactly. Massive, in, mass, massive, massive um, in, uh, rise in in porn because yep. you know they they they're, they're viewing it on their phones, you know they're passing yep. it around on their phones. I mean, for us it was uh, health and efficiency. I think the thing was when I was about eleven and you used to have a look at, 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 at this magazine that was you know oh you know now it's it's it's, it's exactly. on their phones. 
You know, so yep. massive rises in that. Massive rises in 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 in, in just just the kids being out. And and they say, well, you know, they they they've got to be kept in a bubble when they're in school. You see them at the school gates, come half past three, four o'clock. They're all congregating together with their masks off, go walking home. Right. So this this idea of keeping them in a bubble, keeping them, you know, oh, we got to give me that's bull. When they get home to their streets, they they're in each other's houses. You know, they're messing about. Yep. There's no yep. there's no constraints on them there. But in school, they have to wear a mask and sit two two yards away from each other and all this. It's not working. It's not working. No. Get the kids back in school. Get them learning. Get them educated. Because we are now, like you said before, the have and the have nots. The haves will be paying for tutors. You know, they will make sure yep. their kids are educated. The have nots can't afford that. And their kids are just going to flounder and they're just going to be cannon fodder for the next 30, 40 years. And that winds me off the clock. You know, yep. it winds me off the clock and, and it frightens me. Again, I'm back to being frightened for what the kids are going to be facing in, in, in a few years' time. You know, trying to get these kids back into school is going to be enough. You know, and then yep. social mobility has gone out the window. Um, oh, it's 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 such a shame, and and it's well again, you know, I, I, you know, diving below the surface, and the, the the problem is, you know, if we had this crisis in education, but the problem is, the families have deteriorated so bad. Parenting, absolutely. You know, and and the parenting, so it's starting at the root. The, you know, the the foundation yeah. is a mess. Hmm. It's and it and it's it's you know? it, it's it's starting in the home. That, that you know, but then again, you might have. I mean, I'm, I'm stereotyping here a little bit, but you may have third and fourth generation of, of worklessness anyway that these kids have right. to overcome. You know, and, yep. and so so that there is a, a malaise anyway about it. Then yep. you add on the fact that they're exactly. not going to school. Then you add on the fact that that when they come out of school, they'll have no qualifications. Then you've got back into the same thing again. I mean, the rise, there will be, and the stats aren't out yet, and Jane, Jane pointed this out, the, there will be a massive rise in teen pregnancies. Yep. Now, because they, they've got nothing else to do. <laughs> you know? Yep. It's, yep. it's as simple as yep. that. And, and yep. so they'll be looking, you know, I don't know whether it's the same with you, but over here, if, if they have a little baby, the chances are they will get accommodation. So... Again, yep. you know, it's a way out of 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 a, yep, of a crappy home life. Yeah. You know? But it. Yep. But I've, I'm I'm I, I'm pontificating a little bit here, and I I, I don't mean to. It sounds like it's all doom and gloom, and and you know, I I still I still have faith in the human spirit. I still believe that that you know we will get through this. We will be changed. We will be altered. But as as society should, I mean, we should change, we should alter, we should get different. Um, you know, you and I are, are probably dinosaurs. You know, we 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 what, what they call it, golden age thinking, where you always think that, that you know when I was a kid it was much better than today. And but was it? I don't know. But it, it being looking back as I always do. I mean, it's so funny in this house because Jane and I meet in the middle because Jane's always looking to the future. You know. And what's going to happen in the future? I'm looking back, so so we we kind of like ships that pass in the night. We occasionally meet in 2021, but most of the time I'm looking in 19, you know, 1916 or whatever, and occasionally we'll meet up, you know. Um, but, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I remember sort of the, the writing the books and actually finding um, a photograph of somebody. We had the only. A female recruiting officer in the whole of Britain here in Nutsville in Cheshire in, my, in the, the town and I thought oh this is interesting so I was this was my dissertation I was sort of researching and I found a photograph of her in a paper going back to 1916 so I come running downstairs you know and I'm, I'm, I'm dead please look at this look look at that, that that so so look at that, look at that. and and the look on Jane's face was, what is this guy been sniffing? You know, is he snorting something up there? Because I'm so excited about this photograph. <laughs> and Jane's looking at me as though, it's, yeah, it's, it's a photograph. 
Because you know, I remember doing exactly the same thing. I, 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 cause as you know, I, I love Florida, and um, I, we went down to Florida, um, and I'm a, a huge Humphrey Bogart nut. And um, we we stayed at the Holiday Inn in Key Largo because he made a film called Key Largo, and yeah, you know we saw he'd it. never been Beautiful there. He film. wasn't filmed there. He wasn't filmed there, but he he did he did make. So I go for a walk onto the the deck, and there's this boat. And I'm looking at this boat, and it's the African Queen. It's the oh. real, genuine African Queen. It's moored wow. there. So this guy's wow. there on it, you know, and he's polishing it, and I'm talking to him. He said, we'd like to come aboard. So I'm, I'm, I'm now sitting on the back end where Bogart or something with Catherine Hepburn. <laughs> right? So I get off this boat, and I run up. And I was, I was married to, to my ex-wife at the time and, and, the, and the kids. I burst into the hotel. Room. Come on, come and see this. I get them all out of bed. Come on, come on, down down to the dock, down to the dock. So I heard them all down to the dock. Look! And my son, who was eight at the time, said, it's an old boat, Dad. I, an old boat look at that and I'm the only one that's excited you know they all walk away shaking their heads you know you, your dad's off your dad's off on one you know he's, there he goes again looking into the past you know and I was dead chuffed about seeing this boat and nobody else was, was apps and you know they just looked at me as if to say yeah yeah alright we'll, we'll, we'll humour you and then they walked off <laughs> so, so yeah so Fabulous. Yeah, it's, um, Tony, this yeah. has been great. We just we ended the show, but I'm sure we're still recording. Um, I, I, I this could go. This is I'm so sad that we have that, that there's been the break, but you know that's life. But uh, we've got to do this again because there's so much left uh, uncovered and unanalyzed. And and but you're a, really, I love. I mean, there was great humor here. Um, and, and great concern, and I think that one of the things that I love about this is that the people who do listen come away extremely uh, altered and, and enriched and have a sense of hope um, mm-hmm. amidst all of the, so. the, the, the doom and gloom. But you're right. I mean, I when this hit, I mean, because, you know, you and I, you know, are writing novels and, and things and later in life. I'm, I'm, I wasn't trained to do this, and so I have to figure it out myself and so I read these books about story and screenplay and what I found yeah. out they're, they're more spiritual than most books that I read even on spirituality yeah. and one of the things that comes out is in every movie and every book and every great story there's a period just before the end where the hero has a dark night of the soul he, he, he all is mm-hmm. lost this is the all yeah. is lost moment and yeah. you know, and and for, for all the talk about conspiracy theories and everything, I said, look, you can you can go on and you can rave about the government, you can rave about conspiracy, you can rave about whatever. I said, but the fact is, this is life. Life has done mm-hmm. this before. Life is doing oh. it now, and life will do it again. And yeah. this is the dark night of the soul. And now the yeah. heroes, the the, the ones who who accept it as that, that all is lost and rebuild themselves will move yeah. on. And those who, who so once, don't, won't. Yeah. The ones right. who put their heads above the trenches, uh, you know, they're, they're the ones that, that you've got to look to and, and, and you know, and, and, and emulate, if you will, because they're, they're the ones that are, are doing it. They're the ones who can see, you know, more than we can. Um, and if, you know, Politicians, no. I mean, Billy Connolly said a great thing about politicians. Um, the great, the great comedian. He, he said that if yeah, anybody I'll... who wants to be anybody who wants to be a politician should automatically be banned for life from ever being one. And that is just superb. <laughs> it's true. It's yeah. That, it's that not even funny. What, it's he, true. It's true. You know, they they should not. If you want to be a politician, you should automatically be banned from ever being one. And it's true because you, they, they're just a different breed. And, you know, oh, yeah, they, are. They, they, they absolutely. Yeah, they oh, are. And, but you know, as an entertainer, I used to do clo- what they call close up magic, and you'd have to get, you know, you do mostly pocket tricks, and, you know, you use. Yeah. And I, I remember doing one for a group of po- politicians. Uh, you know, salesmen, you know, they, you'd go up to salesmen and they're very gregarious and this and that. I didn't get within 15 feet of a group of politicians and they all turned, looked at me and had their hands extended 
I'm in introducing themselves. And I <laughs> never mm-hmm. my life. Yeah. But th- they yeah. are. They're a different cat. They need that That's approbation. And a lot of them uh, befriend entertainers because what they really want to be, and and we see this in Trump and, and so many of them, they want to be entertainers, but they can't. Yeah. So they, they become yeah. politicians. They're know? failed entertainers. And uh, you know. scary. But I, I, so, I do wish Tony, we, we thank you. Let's, have... uh, well, let's stay... Do this more. In fact, that this is, uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about um, doing one of these with Jane as well, and getting the other half. Well, <laughs> well J- J- half. Jane would certainly blow your socks off. Honestly, she'd scare you Great. to death because some of the some of the stats that she's got on on on, on what's happening with our youth is frightening. Well, so, yeah, she, exactly. she would be something yeah, you, know, you should speak in, to. Right, I went. I went in to get my prosthesis, uh, an adjustment on it the other day, and the guy said to me, uh, the prosthetist said, uh, I said, how are you doing? He says, well, our kids are in school and my wife, I said, what does your wife do? She says, well, she's a counselor. I said, wow. I said, she must be busy. He says, yeah, she works for the Veterans Administration, but but," she says she's so busy with a private practice. And I said, really? I said, and he goes, yes. He, He said, teenage girls. Just what you, everything mm-hmm. you mentioned just a little while ago, in, in crisis yeah. mode. And, Absolutely. Um, so, I, I, tell her I'm hunting for her. I'll uh, when oh, I get I'll, the time, I'll, I want to I'll tell her to give you a shout yeah. because, yeah, because Excellent. honestly, God, you, you you'll be diving into a foxhole because you'll be so scared. I tell you, some of the stuff she comes Good. out well, with. We, <laughs> Well, we need we need the alarms, don't we? We need fire alarms. Absolutely. We need, uh, Absolutely. Great. Tony, thank okay, you so much. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure out how to edit the first ten or fifteen minutes when we couldn't connect. Okay. But this is a okay. gem. Uh, this okay. is a gem, Tony. I want to keep this. This is a beaut. Thank you. Okay. I'll speak to you soon. All right. Thank, thanks, okay. folks. Take, if you're still with us, that was. Okay. Bye bye.